Today, we are going to take a look at the structures we can use in the renovation of Evanston. That's coming right up. I'm Roy Smith. It's always good to see you again and to share the hobby of model railroading with you. In fact, that's what we do on this channel. We share the hobby of model railroading. So if you're into model railroading, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't done it yet, so that you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. Now, as you may recall, we started to renovate the Evanston and Granger area of my layout back in October. It's hard to believe that it's been that long already. For a few weeks, our work on the renovation was set aside because we had to go under the layout to do some bench work, lighting, and wiring as a result of the renovation topside. Well, you've seen how I do my wiring and there's still a lot of it to do, but you certainly don't want to sit there watching me do it. So I'll do it off camera and in the meantime, I will bring you back to the Evanston area to continue working on the renovation there. By way of quick review, I removed the existing structures and track at Evanston. I realigned the track in the yard. I concealed a hole in the backdrop through which trains pass at Granger Junction using scenery and a highway bridge. I rewired the track at Evanston. And I showed you how I will create the illusion that the yard tracks have a lower profile than the main line. I will put a link to the Evanston playlist down below so that you can go back and watch any of the episodes in the series that you may have missed along the way. So what comes next at Evanston? Structures. That's right, structures. Now I'm going to be honest with you. Structures are not my favorite part of the hobby. I especially don't enjoy scratch building structures. For that reason, all of the structures that now exist on my layout are kit bashed except for two of them that were scratch built by friends. These two scratch built structures include the former UP depot at Green River built by David Rarig, and the yard office at Green River built by Chris Perry. This time I would like to enjoy the process of adding structures to my layout. So I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to do it slowly, carefully, and without stress, even if it takes more time to do it. Right now, this is what Evanston looks like without structures. There's track and that's about it. Pretty bleak, isn't it? But in a moment, I will show you some kits that I can use for structures at Evanston on my layout. First though, let me show you a Google satellite view of the railroad complex on the prototype. The complex includes three primary buildings, a 28 stall roundhouse, a five bay machine shop, and a power plant that supplied electricity to the complex. These brick structures were, were built in 1912, 1913 to replace earlier wooden buildings. And there are a number of ancillary buildings that probably won't appear on my layout. For many years, the complex was the main UP servicing point between Green River, Wyoming and Ogden, Utah. But the development of diesel engines made the facilities at Evanston obsolete. The UP donated the entire complex to the city of Evanston in 1972, except for the power plant, which I believe still belongs to the UP. The city has renovated the machine shop and most of the roundhouse and uses these buildings for public and private events. I will show you street level views of the three structures in later videos. Now let me show you the kits I plan to use. They include a roundhouse, a machine shop, and a power plant. All three of these kits will have to be bashed into shallow 3D structures. I don't have anywhere near enough space here for them as complete kits. And over here is Depot Square, which I hope to recreate on my layout. The Union Pacific donated this depot to the city in the late 1980s. The city renovated it and now uses it as a community center. 
I will put the former freight office here using either the kit that is already assembled or perhaps this other kit that is still in the package. I've got some kits here that hopefully I can bash into something resembling a compressed version of the Union Tank Car Company. And for background structures, I've got some flats and perhaps most importantly, some photos of downtown Evanston. All of the structures that I showed you will have to be kit bashed or modified in some way, mainly to fit the available space and to resemble the structures on the prototype as closely as possible. Remember, I'm modeling a modern era layout and the UP hasn't used its railroad complex in Evanston in a long time. So in that sense, all of the railroad structures in this scene will amount to background buildings. Naturally, I want to paint and weather the buildings. And I also want to add roads, parking lots, and sidewalks, interiors and interior lighting where appropriate, trees or other vegetation, and people in the scene. Doing all of this will take a long time, partly because I'm still learning how to do these kinds of things, and partly because I'm the world's slowest model railroader. I will have to do most of the work off camera and then show you the results, what I did, and how I did it. So I guess it's time to stop talking and get to work because I've got a lot to do and I want to be able to show you some progress in the weeks ahead. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't done it yet. Also remember, I upload Dispatch, the weekly show for model railroaders, on Tuesday nights, and layout updates on Saturday mornings, or at least that's what I do when real life doesn't get in the way. You can watch any of the videos in the Evanston Renovation series by clicking over here as well as videos in the Under the Layout series. Be sure to join me next time. I'm Roy Smith. Happy railroading.